Okay, hi guys. As you can see, I have my handy dandy whiteboard here. And I decided that I'm going to try to explain what's going on around the world with a whiteboard. Now, when I look at the world, I do not look at it through emotional states like most humans are doing. That is the downfall. There are, I, I don't know if I've really had a talk with you guys about the difference between feeling and emotion. Feeling is also what I would call instinct. It's that instant knowingness that you have on any situation, any question at all times. Now, whether or not you shut off your brain focus and are aware of that, that truly is your direct line to not only your higher self, but it will be a direct line to, through your human body, through the planet Earth, through all that is, including source as you know it, which is all that is. Okay, that instinct, that spark, instant spark, and it's very fast, very instantaneous, that is your answer. And the answer is simple. It's all based on duality. Not that one is good, not that one is bad. This is simply what that instant spark will tell you. If that instant spark feels good, and you know what good feels like, there may be different layers of how you feel good, but you know what good feels like. If it feels good, that simply tells you you're moving up in vibration. If that instant spark feels bad, you know you're moving down. Now these terms I'm using for you. I would prefer to say that you were moving sideways, but that's not what humans have described over time. So I'm going to stick with what you guys have been taught before. We're going to go up and down. Now, understand this clearly to me. Up is not better. Down is not worse. They are simply different. The reason why I personally do not like down is I have, do not have experience in this game of duality and linear time space. It is not my normal gig. I do not come here to play. But there are many, many, many millions upon billions of entities that repeatedly play this game and enjoy it a great deal. So even though you feel bad and you interpret that as bad and you can't even comprehend that you would come to a creation where you would be in a physical body and feel bad, the truth is that that intense bad versus feeling better, bad versus feeling better, is indeed what fractals down the all it is into tiny little experiences that are very, very different than what we play outside this game. And very, very different from what I play and create outside this game. It is not my preference. I prefer where I went when I died, when I went home. And I enjoy that much, much better. But there's no judgment against the, the beings that enjoy it here. Okay? So, if you want to be successful at getting out of this for whatever reason you're you you may be a human and you may be what i call a medium or a light or a long-term human you may be a big time player in the game you may be a long-term player from the very beginning of duality and linear time space and the split between what you call masculine and feminine you may be that long a player and ready to get out you may be wanting to make the play for 5d because it's a unique experience to go that man, that far in vibrations in a human body. It's never been done. You may be doing that. You may be a star seed where you're just not comfortable here. That you don't. You came to help Gaia, and it has nothing to do with playing the game. You just want to help her and get out. Whatever the reason, it doesn't matter. Uh, I assure you, if you're a star seed, you came to do the job. You you're doing it, or you've done it. You can't not. It has nothing to do with your physical body. You didn't come here to spread the word of peace and enlightenment. That's not, doesn't have anything to do with it, okay? <laughs> it's much, much more complex than that, and the human brain cannot even begin to fathom it. But in order to help you guys, I am going to give you a chance. I'm going to give you a shot on this, and hopefully, I don't have a... I don't have somebody to hold my camera or something to hold the camera. Hopefully I can get this done by myself with my high production level, <laughs> as you guys know. All right. 
So the first thing that you really need to understand is that I am talking about frequencies here. Frequencies, folks. Frequencies. I am not talking about emotional cases. Man, this is... There's got to be a better way of doing this. Okay. Maybe that's better. Let's see how that works. Yeah, it gives you more room. Okay. When I start talking about things, I'm going to be using language that you might be triggered by. But I'm not talking about it from an emotional standpoint. Let's get back to that point. Feeling, instinct, instant. When you have a feeling and you start thinking about it and you start collecting data and you start watching TV and you start thinking about your friends or whatever, whatever, then you go into an emotional response. Now, emotional response are 100% wrong every time. Feelings slash instincts are 100% right every time. Because the second you incorporate your perspective and add it to that initial feeling, now it has, been, it has become something completely different. It is no longer a guide for you to be one with all it is. Okay? And you had that choice. That's all it is. You came here. That's a built-in guidance system. Very simple. It's not complex. You either choose to follow it if you don't or you don't. If you do not, if you start adding accumulated data and create an emotional response and you respond to it, that response is not one with the all that is at all. There's nothing wrong with it. You just created a completely new individual perspective that individual perspective is not going to match anybody's but what people do is they have that instinctual response usually bad <laughs> usually the bad ones are the ones they build on then they start accumulating data all around them and they build this emotional response which adds energy then they align themselves more people that have this energy and it definitely creates a unique perspective but everybody who does that wants everybody in their group to think and feel and see things the exact same way which of course is impossible because they aren't you so they haven't accumulated what you have to create this emotional response but people with really strong emotional responses will find others that are of similar range which gets us to the next point range now you've heard of me talking again I am talking vibrational. Vibrations. Frequencies. Everything is made up of energy. You know that. You went to science class. Everything's made up of atoms. And what they're starting to learn, I believe, is that the body emanates frequencies off of it based on what you're feeling okay and as i've told you before a human being the lower that you go let's say human being a human in 3d has a range of one to ten we're going to give them a one to ten one to ten that's all you've got now a human in 4d has a range of 1 to 20. And these are just analogies. In reality, there's no numbers. There's no gateways. There's no differentiating. This is just to help you understand. A human in 5D has a range... Oh, wait a minute. That's not right. That's not right. A human in 4D can't reach these lower vibes. So they have a range of 5 to let's say 20 okay so now they can no longer reach one through four okay let's put this over here now a human that's in 4d can no longer reach one through four that's not working one through four one through four is now gone can't do it can't do it. No longer. If you stay in 4D, you cannot do it. Now, because humans really don't know what they're doing, 
they usually pop between this. They really move. They usually keep their their focus, especially in 3D, even though they have a range of 1 to 10. They rarely used it. They would usually get caught up in an emotional tizzy and keep themselves in like a 1 to 3 or a, a 4 to 6 or a, a 8 to 10 level. And this is what you call despair and happiness and everything in between. So while you were in 3D, you could close down this number of 1 to 10, which you could do, but most people didn't, and close it down and move back and forth within this range, this being the range, and you could move that back and forth like you turn the dial of a radio station. That's what they would do. That's what all humans did while they were in the third dimension, is they go back and forth between this 1 to 10 scale. 1 being total, complete despair, 10 being what you guys called at the time, ultimate happiness. That's how you, that's how you identified them. When you were in the third dimension, that's all you had. You went from lower to, but in reality, this was only a 1 to 10 scale. Now the reason why that is done is in order to focus a god down to this level using all kinds of control systems, the uh, fear factors like money, poverty, not having food, um, loss of a loved one, unable to find relationships, friends, uh, not getting a good enough education, not being good enough, not being good enough, and not being good enough anywhere. Not in your religion, chances of you going to hell, way high. Not being good enough and going to uh, karmically having to replace it, repeat it. You see, everything in the third dimension was based on keeping you in fear. Okay? All right, and keeping you away from your feelings. Uh, men were taught feelings are bad. People were taught feelings were bad. Emotions were bad. Don't have them. I mean, this was almost necessary. Keeping your head, figure things out. Um, even though women were made fun of for their emotional response and their feelings, uh, around the world people know about women's instincts. Okay? Women's instincts are correct. And that's why they stayed in the picture. That's why they've got that word attached to them which was that underlying on the big picture. Remember, we're talking big picture, guys. Pull back. Pull back. Stop being so emotional about this. Pull back and go with me on the big picture or click off. One or the other. I don't care. Okay, so here's human beings on this 1 to 10 frequency scale, and that's all they are. Now, up here, running around, are aliens in the fourth dimension. Zooming around humans in 4D... And they're like at 2,500 to 10,000. They can't even reach 1 to 10, but they can watch 1 to 10, and they do. So as we get down through this, and I start talking about 4D beings, this isn't even a high 4D being. That's a relatively low 4D being. So my point is humans in 3D 1 to 10... 4D beans, very common, 2,500 to 10,000. My analogy is holding so that you see the difference. These guys watched you guys in amazement that somehow from a God status, you could go to, these guys are really low. They've done a good job of forgetting who they are. And yet you guys in human 3D form in that hellacious place that nobody wants to talk about, the history that no one wants to go over, successfully took it down to 1 to 10. Now there are 2D and 1D places. And I gave an analogy to a friend the other day, and I really like this analogy. I want you to think of that um, humans in 3D are like playing Russian roulette with one bullet. 2D humans are playing Russian roulette with two bullets. And 1D humans are playing Russian roulette with three bullets. Now, pigeons, I mean, geckos, they love to play poker at the casino. They are experts at poker. One singular game. Those are the geckos. And yes, I will do a video shortly telling everybody who hasn't watched all 600 videos what I mean by gecko and pigeon. 
But for now, geckos are more reptilian, very focused, very narrow beam of what they want to do. So think of them, they're in the casino, all they do is play poker, and they beat just about everybody, all the time, because they're experts at it. Then think of the pigeons, they own the casinos. Okay? So we've got the pigeons that own the casinos. They're big, broad, broad spectrum. Geckos go in the pigeons' casinos all the time, steal all their money because they're experts at poker. Then there's humans that are in the back room playing Russian roulette with a gun. Boom, spin, pull the trigger, pull, pull the trigger, spin, pull the trigger, spin. If anybody doesn't know what Russian roulette is, well, look it up. And then they go down further and further. So the intensity of the game increases, okay? But it's all a game. And you're doing it all on purpose. Doing it all on purpose. So now the humans are up in this game. Now I just reminded you that an average being in fourth dimension is 2,500 to 10,000. 40 humans have stepped in and they're maybe at a 5 to 20. I'll give them 5 to 50. How about that? We'll give you a little bit more. You have 5 to 50. This transformation right here from 5 to 50, and let's say the minimum to get to 5D, the minimum to get through 4D to 5D is an easy 50,000. Okay? That's the reason why I said nobody's done it before. Because in one human lifetime... What entities are trying to do, including me, is to go from one to ten to fifty thousand dollars in one human lifetime. You spent the majority of your life running around in one to ten. Couldn't even get past ten. Now you're thrown into a five to fifty, and most of the time I see everybody staying down around five. Why? Because five was up here. So you're very comfortable with it. You've already been there. You already spent a lot of time from here to here. I don't see a lot of people going up to 10 to happiness, even though I've told you for three years to do that, because I knew this was coming. I knew that if you sat up here at 10 for a year, when 4D came in and you were given the option to go from 10 to 50, you'd be ready. But you didn't, and you aren't. And what I tried to tell you is this 10 happiness that you think is so great if you will keep going happier and happier, it will go five times better without you even trying. It's amazing. And you're already way below everybody else. Okay? All right, we're going to drop this out for a minute. Okay. So the question from my friend the other day was, so if you're higher in vibration, does that make you happier? Absolutely it does. His next question was, so are the geckos and the pigeons happier than humans are? And my answer, absolutely yes. There is no one more unhappy in this game than humans in 3D were, and now humans in 4D are. And if you look around the world, even though there are wonderful things that you can look at, there are systems that are crashing that needed to go down. There are magnificent positive things happening. What do humans in 4D do? They stay at 5. They whine, they complain, they fight, they burn, they throw fits. They, com they condemn everybody around them. Instead of looking for the 10 and up, which is what I told you all to do, they stay at 5. Okay. So, moving on. Now we've got Gaia. And Gaia's range is, well, it's bigger than I could write down on this piece of paper, but we'll use numbers that maybe compared to 1 to 10 over here. 1, one 5, and 10 range that you can understand. Gaia's range, and she has patience because she's a planet. Let's see, her gain range is 1 to 5 million. That's her range, okay? This was in 3D. In 4D, because she can really pop this side 
and she's dragging this side to get as many people, humans, on board as possible. So Gaia in 4D, because she's pushing humans, has become 5 to 25 million. Because she's really moving. Now, all of these numbers on the high side, this is nature. These are beings and humanoid beings that are rocking it. They're rocking it. So they're up here in the millions of range. So you have things like elementals. Um, the moon is involved. The sun is involved. The galaxy is involved. These numbers up here include everything that is tied to her in this dimension. Everything that you think of as, as, as the universe. So it's not just about you on this little planet. She's got to incorporate everything in the known universe and there is a multiverse involved as well as multiple timelines so these numbers are huge much larger than this and she's still holding one and five for you little humans because you're so stubborn you won't move won't move now we're in the middle of 4d and she's had enough and she put her foot down she said this i can't do anymore no more no more. You have to step it up. So now in the 4D department, because she's moving to 5D, she's almost completely there. She's got humans here and they won't even come up to the 50. To, to be, they won't even come close to 50. So what she has done is she has changed her frequency level and she's gradually gone from 10, left 5 and gone to 10. 11, 12, 13, 14. And she's doing that over 90 days. And these are moving. Oh, your choice at any time to move up. She's kicking you off the five. No more allowed. And she's kicking this up. This bottom line up. Where she'll stop, I don't know. I know she just keeps doing it. It keeps moving. Every time... Depending upon the individual consciousness, every time she bumps up this bottom line and she runs it, she scans the planet, all the humans, now everybody, everybody else is way past humans. Everything else on this planet, in this universe, has gone worlds behind, behind, ahead of humans. Humans are the ones that are causing the slowdown. So she is... Getting rid of the bad stuff, and that can look kind of scary, but she's offering all this cool new stuff that nobody's looking at. So she said, okay, I'm tired of it. They'll either get it or they get off. So she's up in the, she's up in the game every time, every time, every time. Every time you turn around, she's up in the game. And what that looks like is extremely horrible stuff, worse, and extremely wonderful stuff. So that this, this one, two... Five that you had up here as a human, this best life ever, it isn't even there anymore. That five is down here in the 4D level, and five isn't even right there. Let's see. She's making it so you can't, you used to be, it was like five, actually, this is one to four, five to 50. Okay, five's no longer available. She took that off. Then she took off six. Then she took off seven. Then she took off eight. Then she took off nine. And she's doing it so fast. I don't think people can even really feel that up of the best side. Because she's waited so long. So there's, she's not going to. At this point, we are on a clear, I would say, 15 to 50. 50 on the, 15 on that scale. Where you started out over here at five. Now that's up to 15 to 50. That's how far we've moved, like 10 points-ish towards the 50, where you step into the beginnings of 5D. All right? And that's low end, man. Everybody is being really, really, really helpful to anybody, though, any human that wants to get up there. But if you don't keep, anybody who doesn't keep up with this pace, this 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 that she's upped, this bottom... This bottom range of hers, which is now about 15, if you don't keep up with that every single time that it was upped, and this is a gradual thing, it's not a 
You know, it'd be a, it'd be 10.0001, 10 10.0002, 10.003, all the way to 11.001, You get my drift. It's a natural wave. It's not a, okay, 10 was here, everybody jumped. 11 was here, everybody jumped. No, it's not like that. It was just gradually moved up like this. For every human that refused to move to the next number on their low in frequency range, this is where the decision was made. No harm, no foul, nobody's in trouble. But if they said, no, that's not a range I want to be in. I don't want to be, I don't want to leave one through nine. I came here to do below 10. And so Gaia will go to them and say, okay, I get you, but I came to leave. And there's an instant understanding on a higher level between gods of what the game is. So the person in the human body that doesn't want to go any high, that's when they become an NPC player, non-player char character. And that human being right there that did that, now 100% of their energy, let's just say 100%, they were 100% conscious, 100% of that God energy was focused into running that little human in this playing field which isn't the way it is, but we're going to use it for now. 100%. Now, guy said, nope, you got to go higher. Entity said, no, I don't want to. Guy said, well, you can either drop dead, i.e. coronavirus, killings and riots, um, tsunamis, whatever. The option is, at that point, you can die, get shot by somebody, or you can drop this 100% down to 10%, Give me enough in my human body that you are borrowing from me to just run it on a day-to-day -day basis. You don't have to really put much time in it. Just 10%. Just to keep it going. And the entity that is in that human body gets to decide which way to go. But they got to decide. If they decide to just leave 10%, there is an alternate earth of the vibration, let's say they wanted to stay in 1 to 5. There's an alternate earth that stays at 1 to 5. They just move over to it. The human person doesn't even know that's happened. That's the whole point of the game. You don't want it to show because you're busy trying to forget your God. You don't want God moves to be obvious. They happen all the time. This is just the single one I'm explaining right in the moment. Okay? So now they hop over to an alternate earth that's 1 to 5. Let's say somebody wants to go 11. They hop over to an earth that's like 1 to 11. 1 to 13, 1 to 14, 1 to 15. It will continue all the way up to stepping into 5D. Which would they still do it? They can still do it forever in this game. Right? Are you with me? In this process, the higher Gaia goes... What is happening is most of the humans that are on this planet are opting out to go to 5D. That does not mean that they're less good people. It means they're opting out for a different game. So, they know what they're doing, as I've told you over and over and over again. So, if they're in the middle of a riot, or being tortured, or shot, or dead, or caught up in a tsunami... This is just the process of them leaving the planet as she goes up. It's just because they want to play another part of the game. I don't understand why this is so hard for people. What y'all do, as I say this over and over again, is you get all caught up in the emotions of what they're doing in their game. You don't focus on what you say you want, which is to go to 5D, which I've told you what to do. I've told you over and over and over and over. Stop worrying about what they're doing. It's none of your business. None of your business. It's none of your business if 7.5 billion people on this planet decide to go to alternate Earths and continue their low vibratory game. So what? How has that got anything to do with you? If you want to go to 5D... And if you're going to watch them, then you're going to have to pull way back and watch them from afar in fascination, in interest, in wanting to see how the game works. 
But if you get right down in their face, what will happen to you is your vibration will drop down to these levels. 11, 12, 13. And you will become an NPC player. You will go to an alternate Earth. You will not go to 5D, I guarantee you. None of the alternate Earths are going to 5D. None of them. They're like a dream of a dream. Gaia is the only original Gaia that is here. The other ones are created because we are creator gods. You can create everything, but you cannot create Gaia any more than somebody else can create you. You are you. Gaia is Gaia. But they absolutely can create a version of Gaia that they can pop over to like they never even missed a step. But because of the vibratory lowness of it, and the people that want to play the game, it will go back down. It won't go up. It won't go up. And it doesn't really matter if it's an alternate Gaia. Who cares? As long as they feed that belief system, it's going to continue on. But Gaia herself, the real thing, she is doing her own thing. Eventually, those alternate Earths, by the way, will have enough energy from those that are on it, or... The people that are on it will die off. And that alternate earth will just kind of fizzle away back into energy. If they stay on it long enough, it will create another being. Another consciousness will come in at a certain level when there's enough energy there. And there will be another earth. They'll probably call it a different name by then. Not Gaia. They'll call it something else. Because that's usually how it works. Okay? All right? Now, let's get back to something else. We got 3D, 4D humans on the lowest level because they get a pass. Now, let's get back to that question because I know y'all are going to ask it. What do you mean the geckos, and, and I'll give you another one that will really blow your mind. Not only are the geckos and the pigeons happier than humans, but so are the demons. Oh, mind blown, right? Because... You're under the impression, you're under the impression that humans are all that in a bag of chips, and you know what you're doing, which you don't, and you're stepping in the 4D world, and now the 4D world is huge, huge, it's bigger than everything that you know. Everything you've ever seen about every galaxy that's ever been, you think in terms of your universe, your known universe, which is hilarious because you don't even know what your universe is. And you know that you don't know because every time you send up or make a bigger microscope or ma um, um, telescope or send up a telescope, you find more. What do you think that means? When you didn't have telescopes or things in the sky, you saw the stars as they are from your back porch. And then they started getting telescopes and seeing further and better. And then they sent up telescopes and saw further and better. Well, do you think maybe, just maybe, there's probably not an end to that? That that probably just keeps going forever as you thought about that? Okay? So, now, if you're with me, you've begun to understand how big 4D is. Now take that and multiply it to different layers of the universe. Because in 4D, there are beings that live in the 1,000 range, so to speak. Then there's ones that live in the 1100 range. And that goes all the way up to, well, infinite, but one quadrillion, one quadrillion range, and one quadrillion one hundred 111, no, 101 range, 102 range. Now that's 1 quadrillion and 101 and 102. So we've got everything from 1,000 to 1 quadrillion range in 4D. And in this thousands range, oh God, maybe a million different um alien entities, civilizations, 
in 1100, probably another same. 1200, same. Every frequency, just like your frequency, where you can't see anything else but this, all of them are in their range where they can see nothing else but them. And these are your classic aliens, as you think of them. And they're all the way down through quadrillion. And y'all want me to talk about aliens. Okay? I could describe to you in great detail millions of different civilizations. By civilizations, I mean civilizations that might be everything from a moon to multi-galaxies. And there's millions of them. Millions of them. And of those millions upon billions and endless number of alien civilizations you're not aware of, easily, oh, I don't know, a billion of them have come and had interactions with planet Earth. Easily, easily, oh my gosh, uh, a trillion or better have flown by. At any given time, there are millions, hundreds of millions, that are watching you. Every move you make. And there have been millions that have taken and interacted with your genetic makeup. And the hilarious thing is, you're worried about black and white and Asian and Hispanic and whatever in the else you people say. And you pull out your DNA and you hand it to your oh, very well-informed scientists that counter themselves and prove themselves wrong every single week, I do believe. But you send your data to them, and they tell you what your genetic makeup, admitting that there's a whole bunch of stuff there that they don't know what it is. Yeah. And what I'm telling you is if you could see your true genetic makeup, it is more complex than you will ever dream, and you are all much more similar than you are different. As a matter of fact, you're 99% similar at this point. I don't care what your eyes look like, your skin color looks like, I don't care what you live on the planet, that's irrelevant. Your human genetic makeup, if there was an alien that came down on the, from a spaceship and grabbed a human up, they would not say, Oh, let's go find a white one or a black one or an Asian one. They would not do that. They would just land and grab a human being. Doesn't matter what one of us they, they grab because we're all so similar. To them, it is a joke, an absolute joke. And it's also why they're terror. They, they, they absolutely are fearful to come down here is because they can see so easily especially vibrationally, that we not only look alike vibrationally, genetic makeup, we're almost exactly the same, and simply by small things like the tone of our skin, the shape of our eyes, and where we live on the planet, we destroy each other. And then we blame it on each other. It's ridiculous. And because of that, and I'm sorry, it's okay, it's part of the game. But those people have to leave now. Yeah, game has been fun. I don't like it. I think it's stupid. Can't talk to any aliens anywhere with this kind of thinking. But you got to go now. Just got to go. It's not your time anymore. It's guys. So if you want to continue on in these kind of vibrations, this kind of creation, like I've said, from a personal perspective, it's... Very annoying. I don't like living here because of it. I don't like the attitude. It's not the planet that's the problem. It's the people and their attitude. And they don't know how to be nice. I have always said that. I've said that my whole life. The people could solve all of this if they would just be nice. And I don't think being nice to each other is that hard. But obviously it is for humans. But to be fair, it is that not being nice that created 3D, 2D, and 1D now. It is their game. From a human standpoint, it is disturbing to me. I have to pull back frequently and remind myself 
that they're creating a new experience that's never been done before. And although it's not my gig, I have to give them respect for what they're doing. But I can at this point say, get off. We're done. Guy is gone. She's leaving. And you guys, if you want to play, you got to go somewhere else. It's that simple. Now, the good news is that all those NPCs I was talking about, I did find out that once all of them are off, and everybody else that wants to go to 5D has done their job, you don't get to just ride, you got to get your ass up there, that you pedaled your way up in vibration, not looking at all of them leaving, but saying, nope, don't care, I'm going to 5D. If you do that, and the level of the planet gets up to be a certain, a t- certain frequency, and it will be different frequencies for each individual consciousness, uh, other gods outside the game. Because there are gods lined up that want to play duality in linear thinking. They just don't want to play it down in sanity land in 3, 2, and 1D. They don't even want to play in 4D. But they will come in in high 4D. They will do that. And once the NPCs get to that point, these energies, these entities, these gods, that are exactly the same as you and me, from the outside of the game, will come in and talk to these NPCs. Consciousness, the 10 percenters. They've all got 10% left. And they'll talk to these on a higher level and they'll say, Hey, dude, um, if you want to go on your other game at your alternate Earth, I'll be willing to take over this body. And a lot, a lot, most of these guys are going to go, Okay, cool. And they're going to take their 10% and add it to the alternate Earth or alternate planet they went off on, leaving it completely open for the new entities to come in and ha- and or walk-ins, what they call walk-in, and now you've got a completely new entity that vibrates at a very high energy, very much like the prisms, because the prisms are like, I mean, they're just like that 1 to 50, or that 5 to 50 I had on uh, 4D, they're like at 100. You know, they're already pushing. They're like 5 to 100. These new entities will be very similar to the prisms. Their energies will come in high. So you're going to have to fight because the prisms have already dropped that five. They won't even have anything to do with that. They're already up to 10 to 100. And they drop them as fast as they want to. As fast as guy raises, they drop them. So if you've got a prism kid and you're not keeping up, you guys are not going to get along. And eventually, if you don't keep up, you'll go to an alternate planet and the prism will have a 10% NPC to deal with and that's easy. Until one of these new entities come in And the genius of that, which I did not see before, the genius of that is none of the human bodies that Gaia loves so well, because she does love the human bodies you are borrowing, by the way. She does love them. If they don't want to, they don't have to die. They don't have to die. And that was my big concern, because she was really, really not happy with how how badly the human bodies were being treated. You guys are all worried about what they're doing to animals and plants. And she's shaking her head going, it's not the plants and animals that you're torturing. You're torturing me because of your energies emanating from your consciousness. And you're treating my human bodies like crap. That's what you're torturing. And you're not doing a darn thing about that. No, you want to get all lost on one person and wreak more havoc to other people causing more destruction of not only human bodies, but the vibration on the planet hurting Gaia. All of that is changing. And when they do all of that stuff, just know this. When they do all of that stuff, all that does is it kicks them down and out. Down, out. They're not going to get anything done. They won't get anything changed that way. But they will get kicked off this planet. So when you're watching riots and horrendous people doing horrendous things, uh, remember that. They're going down and out. So smile and wave. Say goodbye. Because that's exactly what's happening. Now, I think we'll just leave it at this because it's pretty long. I think we're just going to leave it with you knowing that the geckos, the pigeons, the angels, the demons... The gods, the goddesses, all of them are way higher in vibration in 4D than you are. And so, yes, that translates that they are happier, tremendously happier, which is how they draw people into their little club. 
So the next video, I'm going to teach you a little bit more about 4D entities and how you can avoid being drawn into their clubs. All right, guys, that's it for me. Uh, hope you took notes. Love you a whole bunch. See you later. Bye.